Hey YouTube, Vinny M here and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today we are doing an informational video about a pressure dressing. There are a total of four videos in this series, one for each of the four dressings in front of you. The North American Rescue ETD, the h, &H Medical H Bandage, the Tech Med Solutions Olias Bandage, and the Percy's Medical Israeli. Be sure to check out each individual video for each of the four products to find out information specific to that pressure dressing and what its pros and cons are. But today, we're going to be doing an informational video on the Israeli dressing. The Israeli bandage is by far the oldest of all four of the pressure dressings covered in this four video series. It came out in the late 80s. It was invented by an Israeli combat medic named Bernard Bar Natan. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it was invented as a replacement for what the Israeli military was using at the time. The doctrine at the time is that the Israeli military carried these dressings that were just a piece of almost like see-through fabric that looked like tissue paper on a abdominal sized blood absorption pad and what they would do is they would wrap it around an injury and then once the pad was covering the injury they'd put a rock off the ground on top of it and wrap over it in order to apply pressure. I can actually show you a picture of what those things looked like. They're very crude and it was definitely time for an upgrade. So this is the package this is what they look like when you try to unwrap the package. And this is what they look like unwrapped. Literally a piece of see-through gauze with a pad on it. So this combat medic came up with this design in the late 80s. He submitted it to the Israeli military in 1990 or 91. And then it was accepted and brought to market as well as in service with the Israeli military and pretty much every military around the world after that has used these. It was that much of an upgrade. Now for the sake of consistency in all of these videos for every various brand of pressure dressing throughout this series I'm gonna get the prices from rescueessentials.com. So the Israeli dressing or Israeli bandage or its actual name, which is the Emergency Bandage, is available for $8.10. It comes in a 4-inch wide and a 6-inch wide. There is also a abdominal-specific variant, which you typically only see in military use, which is an 8-inch wide with a 12 by 12 pad. This one is $14.99 and it is very large. It has a very large package. This is a six inch and this is a four inch so you can kind of see the size there. Packaging is the same but the four inch is obviously two inches shorter than the six inch. The original manufacturer of these, the name brand of these, is Percy's Medical. You can see it right there. They do have two different packaging styles. You'll see these gray packages with black tear tabs with the instructions printed on the back and the expiration date stickers on the front they'll say the emergency bandage and that is trademarked that is their actual name they get called the Israeli bandage because they were invented by an Israeli combat medic but you also see a white package meant for the civilian market and they look like this this is a 10 pack so this is a white 10 pack this is the 4 inch variant they are Percy's Medical, you can see it right there. Packaging's the same, same labeling, same name, everything. It's just in a white package. So you can get the name brand product in a white package or a gray package. However, don't be fooled by some of the other stuff you'll see. Because these have been out since the 90s, they've been copied... A lot. This is a six inch copy made in China by Falcon Meditech. 
has the instructions on it like the real ones, has tear tabs like the real ones, except they're on the side. Emergency trauma bandage. This thing's $7.99. It's literally the same price as the name brand one, so why buy this? Because we really don't know what kind of quality is inside of it. This one right here doesn't even have a brand. It says the emergency bandage, or just emergency bandage, I should say. It does have the instructions on the back. It does have tear tabs, although they're very small. Probably get the job done. This one's $6, so it's only $2 less than the name brand one. Personally, I wouldn't spend $2 less to get something that I don't know the quality of when I can just buy the name brand one for 8 and know what I'm getting. This one right here kind of baffles me. Uh, Recon Medical is an American company. This is a copy of the 4-inch. Very nice bright tear tabs. It almost looks like a North American Rescue ETD package, but it's clearly an Israeli dressing because it shows a crescent pressure bar on it. This thing's $14. $14, like... I can get two name brand ones for $2 more than this one. Like, why would I do that? So, just something to be cognizant of, that this has been copied a lot because it's been around a long time, but you might as well just get the original. Now, I'm going to show you how to apply this real quick. I apologize for the squeaky chair. We're going to use the 4-inch that's already been opened for the application. This one's already been opened, but normally as you unroll it, there's a little thread that goes all the way through it that kind of holds this where you can only unroll it four inches at a time, and that keeps it from doing the runaway like that. Most brands of pressure dressings these days have something like that, but uh, since this one's been opened before, I've already tore all those threads and it unrolls all by itself. So this is a stretchy material. It's a little more stretchy than like Ace Wrap, but Ace Wrap is the only thing that I know of that I can say that most people watching this will know what that is. So it's kind of like Ace Wrap, but it's a little more stretchy and it's a little bit lighter and thinner in feel. On one side, you get a loop. On the other side, you get your roll with a locking bar on the end, which we'll see in a minute. You have a crescent pressure applicator right here glued to the back and then on this side you have a four by seven inch blood absorbing pad that has a non-stick surface on it so that it won't stick to the wound and pull chunks of your tissue out when you take it off later. Now the loop is to apply it one-handed so if I have this arm that's been damaged and I have to apply it one-handed I put my arm through the loop will say that my injury is right here. I work the pad over to the injury. I wrap through the crescent bar like that, through the slit in the middle. I pull tight and then I pull back. And what that does is it digs this piece of plastic. It digs the bottom corner into the injury and that applies pressure. Then I wrap and I stretch this elastic material as I wrap. That applies even more pressure. And then when I get to the end, this bar has two hooks in it. I just take those hooks and hook them through the fabric and that holds it in place. So that's how you apply the Israeli bandage. The standard way. Now there is a way to apply it without exerting as much pressure. And you may be wondering, why would you want to do that? If I want to stop bleeding, I want this to dig in. I want to put as much pressure as I can to get it to stop. Well, the reason that you might would do that is something like a head injury. This was designed to be used on any part of the body. And if you have a head injury or somewhere that's pressure sensitive, you probably want to apply a little bit of pressure, but you probably don't want to dig a hard piece of plastic into it. Uh, if you have a head injury with you know, some serious damage to the uh, bone matter of your skull or something, digging that piece of plastic in may not be the best idea. So there is a way to apply this where you don't exert as much pressure. It relies solely on the stretchiness of the fabric. So I'll show you that. And it's super simple. So you pull this over your injury and then instead of bending that bar down, you just go through it every single time just like this.
and I'm getting some pressure because the elastic material is providing some, but I'm not getting nearly as much as if I dug that bar in. And then same thing when you're done, lock it off. So that's how you can apply it and apply less pressure, but still apply some pressure to an injury. Now there's one last way to apply this thing, and I don't necessarily agree with this, but they do market it as being able to be used in this manner. And that is using the crescent bar to twist like a tourniquet to apply a lot of pressure. They say that you can actually get it to function as a tourniquet on smaller body parts. So close to your wrist, maybe your lower arm, maybe down close to your ankle or somewhere where there's not a lot of tissue. Uh, they say that that works really well doing that on small children. So I'm getting this rolled up real quick and I'll show you how you do that. I'll show you what my beef with that is. So the way that you apply it and exert extra pressure is you do it like you normally would except you go around one more time and then you twist this bar. You twist it one turn like that. And this is kind of hard to do one-handed because somehow I've got to get this wrap and go back over it to hold it in place. And I'm going to have to do that off camera. So I go back over and I hook in that again. And then I start wrapping. All right, and I just keep wrapping like I, like I have every time. But what I want to point out here while I have it like this is that when you twist that bar, you're knotting up your blood absorbing pad. See how it's, it's knotted up? Now what was four inches wide is only an inch wide because it's twisted. So my beef with using it in this manner is that if you're still putting it directly over an injury, you're getting almost none of your pad on that injury. Now, if you're literally only trying to use it as a tourniquet, say you have a small child, you're only twisting this to completely cut off blood flow because your cat tourniquet is too long for them, which does happen. A small children, a lot of the commercially available tourniquets like the cat and the Sam Medical XT and the SOFTTW, they don't work on small children because they're too big. So you could use this on a small child and I'm sure you could exert enough pressure to stop arterial flow on something that small and it would work. But if you're actually still putting it on an injury trying to exert pressure, you're losing all of your blood absorbing pad by twisting it. So just something to know about the uh, possible application there. So that's the three ways to apply this to an injury your standard pressure, your light pressure, and your ultra high pressure, we'll say. So that brings us to the pros and cons portion of this video. I'm gonna do a pros and cons at the end for every one of the four videos in this series. However, unlike some of the others, I don't have any cons for this one. This dressing has been around for 20 years. It has been used by the world's militaries very effectively. It has been documented to have been used in active shooting events in the U.S. with great results. It's kind of like your grandpa that served in World War II. He's been there. He's done that. He got the medals on his chest, the t-shirt, whatever you want to call it, and he's a badass. But the equipment he fought World War II with has been one-upped by modern equipment. It doesn't make him any less badass, it just means there's more advanced stuff available. That's kind of how this dressing is. It will do what you need it to do. It will do what it's advertised to do. It will do it very effectively. But over the years, other people have thought they could make a better combat dressing. And some companies have, such as the Elias. This treats one thing. It treats a serious bleed that needs to be controlled with pressure. That's what it stops. But the Elias can stop that. It can be used on a sucking chest wound. It can be used on an eye injury and it can be used for arterial bleeds by means of wound packing. So in that regard, the Elias is superior. However, this dressing 
has been proven time and time again. So I have nothing bad to say about it. If you buy it, it will serve you. It will work, and it will do what you need it to do. It's just the oldest design, and with age, sometimes comes less capability. That's all I have for you guys. Instagram links in the description. As always, like and subscribe, and have a nice day.